week, the Free Energy Special Interest Group, where science meets spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal. I've got here with me Fres, Fresel, and Pontus Hefzer um, at the helm of Physic. Um, if James is here, hi James. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought uh, I'm sharing the PowerPoint presentation, but it's fine. I mean, here we are. Um, we are here for Physic's uh, 115th meeting. Physics 115 meeting is on the, the 2nd of August. I'm hesitating, folks, because I'm trying to, my mouse not working well. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to, I'm going to share screen so you can see the agenda for the meeting. Okay, just give me a moment. Okay, right. Um, Wow. Okay, here we are. Share screen. Um, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, welcome to our platform here, Physic, which is the Free Energy Special Interest Group. We have our 115th meeting today on the 2nd of August. And uh, as usual, <laughs> we never fail you. <laughs> There's always us at the helm, press, Pontus. Uh, James sometimes, if he's not too busy, he's here most of the time. And um, here we are. The show goes on always at physics meetings, which is the first Wednesday of the month. So if you could uh, pen that down in a diary, you will not miss a meeting. And we have some of the world's most brilliant speakers speaking at our platform. It's so good to gather here to listen to them and to learn from them. They brought so much knowledge and uh, disclosure information and uh, sharing their <clears throat> development of their technologies as well, which is superb. And that helps us a lot with our journey here, with our mission as well. So we learn from them so much and we learn from each other when we interact together in our telegram group, our physic telegram group. You will see um, later on in the last screen, the telegram group is where you can interact with each other and form study groups and maybe even uh, be able to interact with the speakers if they are available in the telegram. Okay, so um, today we have the first session speaker, Randy Hatton, with us. He made it at last, finally, to visit. <laughs> I mean, we missed him a couple of times due to him being sick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's talking about the full spectrum of water, the source of all life. He will also talk about the different types of water and the differences between full spectrum, structured, bottled, and uh, tap water the importance of gases, ionic minerals, and uh, informational fuels in drinking water, the effects of magnets, sound, light, vortex, and toroidal motion. Wow, amazing. The connection between water, consciousness, and evolution as well. Turning water into medicine with fifth dimensional heart-based plasma technology, the unique properties of full spectrum water and its benefits. Now we have a lot of authorities on water, the subject of water speaking at physics. So they are sort of like have collaborative findings and that's so wonderful. It's uh, reinforcing and uh, hammering home those facts about water being self-aware and all that, that Benny was talking about earlier. So here Randy is compounding that as well with his own discoveries and development. All right, so the second session we have Gene Decode. He returns at last to speak at Physic. He's been away for a year plus because he was so busy setting up his own website and he's got his own volunteers that he puts together. He's so popular that he couldn't cope by himself. So he's been like having volunteers to represent him all over the world. And he's back. Wow. Um, oh, you can find his videos in our in our channels. Okay. If you go to 
I think I put him in Ditchwood, <laughs> and you know why. <laughs> YouTube doesn't welcome uh, update information like that. And I mean, updates uh, from Jin, I'm afraid. Uh, so we see Jin keeps us informed with updates today about dumps, deep underground military bases, disclosure on non-terrestrial. Russia moved 10 kilometers on their lines. He says Russians have three layers deep of defense and so on and so forth. Please attend the meeting. Okay, just don't go away. And Jean will come on after Randy has finished. Uh, if you want to write to me, write to crystal at truevisionpeace.com, our website, truevisionpeace.com forward slash physic.html. And we have all these channels, you know, Odyssey, which should uh, YouTube, Telegram, and uh, Facebook as well. Oh, this Facebook there. Oh, never mind. Facebook is not so good anyway. Oh, so there you go. Thank you so much, folks, for choosing to join us today. Uh, we so welcome you warmly, and we are so happy to have everyone and the regulars as well with very good intelligent questions for our brilliant speakers. Now, I would like to introduce Randy. Well, Randy's passion is working with water, integrating ancient wisdom with advanced earth-based technologies to optimize its natural vitality. He is a steward who brings true wisdom from years of trial and error, bridging the world of science and spirituality, thus supporting us to raise our consciousness and connection to the spirit of water. His goal is to support all life that depends on clean, healthy water to thrive and assisting Gaia in her transformation. Over the past 22 years, Randy has studied the properties of water, principles of sacred geometry, and the effects of frequency-induced technologies. He discovered that the combination of vortex or toroidal motion, hydrogen, oxygen, liquid carbon, magnetism, sound frequencies, light spectrums, radionics, scalar waves, rare earth elements, along with intentions of love and respect to water, we can transform all water back to its pristine state. Yay, let's hear what Randy has to say. I must say, if you want to contact Randy, uh, you can email him info at vibrantvitalwater.com. He's got some amazing products that you can actually buy from him, uh, from his website, vibrantvitalwater.com. Uh, okay, over to you, Randy. Well, thank you, Crystal, uh, for re-inviting me first off. Uh, it took a bit. Um, the communication of Costa Rica wasn't working real well. But anyways, um, and thank you for yeah, inviting me into your platform, your group here to share some of the... Um, insights and understanding um, from over 25 years in this lifetime, but probably many other lifetimes, uh, to understanding uh, the depth of water that the um, majority of us are not understanding, in my opinion. So, thank you. You're most welcome. It's so good to have you. Yeah. So, you. You want to ask me any questions, Crystal, or do you, you want me to start? Oh, I thought, you see, speakers have uh, like 45 minutes to an hour of uninterrupted uh, presentation of what they need to present and what they have to share or say, their knowledge on the subject, okay? And then uh, the Q&A session will be um, chaired by Fres. yeah? Okay. Q&A, we have about... 20 minutes. If you want to talk just for half an hour, it's fine. We will do the rest in Q&A. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to briefly start where I started about 25 years ago. Um, some spiritual teachers showed up in my life. I was a, I was a commercial fisherman uh, in Alaska, and I spent roughly 10 months a year on the ocean. And um, one of my spiritual teachers about the age of 28, uh, gave me an article about all the toxins being dumped into our rivers, lakes, and streams. 
And it was quite alarming to me because it was millions, uh, literally millions of pounds of carcinogens and toxins from chemical companies and, you know, um, like Washington State actually at that time ranked number one, and that's where I lived. And I believe it was probably like a lot to do with all the processing of timber. So I somehow just knew in my heart and soul that I need to be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. And right around the same time that grandmother Fallingly was her name, gave me this article, um, my girlfriend Sheila brought me a v VHS tape on a man named Johan Grander and the Grander water technology. And this was a, a filtering device in a sense. It didn't physically filter, but it energetically filtered. And I watched this VHS tape and um, somebody's still not muted, Frank, I believe it's you. Anyway, so I watched this tape and I realized that um, it really, really amazed me what this filter did. It was about a foot tall and eight inches by eight inches. And um, the water would just go into it and, and go through this unit and it literally um, would change the energy of the water. And they showed in chemical factories and they showed in growing plants. And so I wanted to go find, buy one of these and cut it in half. My little kid side of me said, how does this thing work? We got to figure out how this works. This is something just tells me this is not woo woo. This is real. And I happened to be fortunate because one of the only distributors in the United States, Dr. Thomas Nazareth was in Yelm, Washington, only about an hour away from me. So I went to go buy one of these and I told Thomas what I was going to do with it. I told him I was going to cut it in half. It's a, it was an $1,800 device. And he, and, he, and he said, well, you don't got to do that. I'll tell you what's in it. And he shakes it. And there is water inside of this filter. I said, water? What, how's, what's, what's that about? How's that work? He says, well, Johan Grander found this special water he believes have these special healing properties and he's pretty much validated and proven this. And he puts it in this copper jacket and as all the other water runs by it, that water picks on the, up on the frequencies of the water in the jacket, the informational fields. And I was like, wow, that's, that's it? That's all that's in there? And he said, yeah, and there's some magnets in there too. So I went home thinking in my head, wow, if water is this sensitive, if it can be changed just from the informational fields of other water, what if you do this? And what if you do this? What if you incorporate sound frequencies? And what if you incorporate um, light spectrums? And, and, and the big one, what if you create a free-flowing interwinding vortex? And you start combining these things together. And it was a big part of this, I believe, is because I started meditating at this age um, because of the grandmother shaman that showed up. A grandmother, Celia, uh, was one of them, and the grandmother falling leaves. And I started meditating, and all of these ideas just started pouring through me. And I don't, I don't even know where it came from. It was really uh, just kind of swept me off my feet in a lot of ways. But I started getting visions and insights about things, and then I and I made the first little device in, in 1998. It was um, a little device where you screw two pop bottles together, and I put magnets on this little coupler, and I, I literally uh, had a patent issued in 1999 on it. Um, I was one of the pioneers, one of the pioneers, there are many other before me too, but of uh, really bringing in this whole term of structured water and how do we create structured water. So I continued to work on this. And next thing you know, I'm patenting bigger devices. How can I actually get these in rivers, lakes, and streams to turn around? How can I help clean, around, clean this whole problem with the chemicals and the toxins in the water? And, and so even though I've been a commercial fisherman all my life, I didn't know what I was doing. I really did not know what I was doing at all. I'm not a scientist. I don't have any science background. Um, I learned life from hands-on doing. And yet something deep in me told me, um, you got to keep going with this. You got to keep going with it. This is your purpose. 
is the part of your work. So after I made this little device, I brought it to both of my teachers and I said, I want you to play with this and I want you to tell me when I come back in a week or so, if you found anything about it, anything different about the water. So a week later, I go back to grandmother Celia and I said, grandmother Celia, what did you, uh, did you find anything? She said, well, yes, and I did. She says, she says, watch this. She, she fills up the, uh, the vortex bottle right out of the tap. She vortexes it up four times, just like my guidance told me to do. She pours it in a glass, and then she gets another glass right from the tap, and she sets it on the two glasses on the table. Then she says, I want you to come back in about a few minutes so we know, you know there's no movement left, nothing is shaking it. And basically, we come back a few minutes later, and she's looking out the glass. She said, you see, you see, son, this water that we vortex, it continues to move. And she said, it continues for a long time. And this other glass, you can see there's no movement at all. And I'm looking at the glasses and I'm like, I, I don't see no difference, grandmother. I can't see what you're seeing. And she says, well, son, I can clearly see, I, I can clearly see this water is moving, stays moving for a long time. This water coming right out of the tap, there's no movement in the, in the water, no energy movement, no movement. And she said, another thing I found, I drew my bath and my guides told me to vortex up some water and pour that one two liter bottle in the bath and she's like and instantly see the energy in the whole bathtub water change and i'm like wow oh, really she says yeah and i clearly see it and, and i can feel the difference and even in the bath just from doing it so then i go to grandmother falling leaves and i ask her what did you find and she says well what i found randy the first time you vortex it there's a ring that comes off the uh, bottle about three, four inches, about three inches, it comes off. There's a ring that's created in an energy field that comes off. You vortex it again, it goes out about another three inches. Again, another three inches and another ring, rings every, every three inches. And then after the fourth time, it, the energy doesn't go out any farther. And another thing I realized is that when you, when you put your hand out from the outer ring and then slowly go in, you can feel a coolness and a warmth, a coolness and a warmth. And I, I actually decided to try and do it. And I actually could feel something, which was surprising to me. I could feel something. Then she said another thing to me. She says, another thing that I discovered is that when you're vortexing this water, you can direct the energy of the vortex to somebody like a prayer. And she says, the prayer is super amplified. So you have to say their name and say exactly what you wanted to do to support them. And I'm like, hmm, you know, scratching my head kind of. And then she says, also, you can direct this energy through the, to the spirit world. Because sometimes the world, of, the spiritual world, the spirit world needs support and help too. And you can actually direct this energy there. I realized this because she, ha she had really good communications with her son who had passed away at a young age. And, and he was helping her to even understand it herself. So then she said, I also realized this can be antiseptic and help with wounds when you put this water on wounds. So I was, uh, was kind of like, wow, there, there's no reason why these amazing individuals, uh, my teachers, would want to lie to me about this. I just knew that. But I needed more science. So I found this place in Seattle, Washington called BEST, Bioenergetic Screening Team. And they had a device in there. A woman named Patricia had a, an electrodermal device. And when I went in there, I was wanting something just a little more science than what the grandmothers were telling me. I wanted something just a little more than that. So this is why I went there. And I brought in a two liter um, pot bottle full of the water. And I just wanted to do, have them do a test on me uh, before I drank the water and then do a test after. And Patricia did this test. And after she did the test, I'll keep the story short as possible. She, she literally looks over at me with big eyes and says, where did you get this water? And I said, well, I made it in my garage. I'm not really telling a lot of people exactly how I'm doing it right now, but I, I made it in my garage. She says, well, she, she pulls out this printout. 
She says, this is what was going on with your energy field before. This is what happened after you just put, she just had me put the water between my legs. I didn't even drink it in a plastic bottle. And she says, this is afterwards. She says, this is what I do for a living. I find people where they're out of homeostasis. You had issues with your lungs. You had some issues with heavy metals in your body, a few other things. And she says like 50 is what we want. 50 is ideal balance. And you had some up in the 80s and eight high 80s, some in the 60s, some down in the 30s and 40s. And after you held the water, this is what happened. It brought you back really close to 50 on all these areas. And she wanted to buy some of the water from me. And I said, you know, purchase, I'll just give you the bottle and keep it. So then I knew at this point, Lily, the universe had me on, uh, had me on a, a path that I was not prepared for. But this is when after that, I started patenting things. And that's because my teacher advised me actually to do the patenting. And then I filed several patents after that for many years afterwards. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to jump down the road about, uh, let's say, 10 years. And I moved here to the high mountains of New Mexico. Well, something that I didn't realize until about eight years ago that I'm just now talking about. You are the first people to hear actually hear this. There is a being named Adema. And Adema has been working with me for about 11 years. And again, I wasn't aware of this until about eight years, seven, eight years ago. And not until just this last couple of years have I really, really been getting clear guidance from this being Adema. And I also have a nonprofit called Project Clean Oceans. So my main intention from this years ago was really to support the waterways of the planet. But it took me down a rabbit hole that I wasn't really prepared, fully prepared for, not knowing I was going to get, get involved into products and, and, and other things. But one of the reasons that, that I did get involved in the products is because my spiritual guides told me, you know, Randy, you can go out and clean up and be a part of cleaning up this contaminated water all over the planet. But if we don't equally work on cleaning up the waters, our internal waters of all humans, then the exterior waters will only be able to be cleaned up so much because we literally are a reflection of our environment. Our environment's a reflection of us. We contaminate our bodies, we contaminate our water, and we contaminate the waterways of the planet. This is how it works. And more and more of us are waking up and realizing this. We are basically one drop in the vast ocean, and we are the vast ocean. So when we know that the waters are acidic, well, they're acidic because we as a human race as a whole have become acidic. And if you want to be a part of the solution, in my opinion, we need to really start thinking this way holistically. What you do to yourself, what you put in your body, you're putting in my body. You're putting in the Earth, Earth Mother's body. We're all one here. We're all in this together. And... So as I went down the road more and more with, with getting guidance, I kept thinking I needed to make the money to install these systems into rivers, lakes, and streams all over. And if you don't, if you don't mind sharing, I would like to share a couple of the pictures of these. So as I'm describing some things, people can understand. Is that okay? Yeah, please do. <clears throat> so you give me the permission to screen share? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're waiting for you to share the amazing creative photographs that you've got on your website. Thank you. Okay, so something I want to point out here. Something that I've come to realize. I wasn't fully, it took me, it literally took me I would say, what, 
um, 18, 19 years to really understand what grandmother falling leaf was seeing and understanding about directing this energy to people and how to direct it through the veil, et cetera. And this is what I've come to realize. And this is because Adima, again, and I'll, I'll go into more about Adima if anybody's interested and in what she's about, what's, what her purpose is. Um, of course, this, this, this is a scalar wave antenna and receiver. It's a receiver and an amplifier. So when we create, this is a hyperbolic cone. This is what is called a hyperbolic cone. Okay. As you see this, this here coming down the middle, this is fifth dimensional. This is fifth dimensional energy. This technology that did not come from me, it came through me. It belongs to the planet. It's ancient. We use this technology in Atlantis. And it's also futuristic. It's stuff that I'm pulling in from future timelines. But it's time now, because of what we're going through on the planet and the transformation that we're going through, it's time for this technology to come out in a bigger way and be understood in a much more bigger, important way. So as you can see this kundalini here, you see this kundalini bend. Well, the interesting thing is, if you're understanding the golden mean ratio, the Fibonacci, this is 1.618 bigger and bigger as it goes up the line. This is showing you universal intelligence being born here. Right here at the zero point, this is where the water goes from centripetal force and also known as centrifugal, or excuse me, um, centripetal pronounced. I pronounce it centripetal. So the centripetal force is about contracting, cooling, condensing. It's the purification levitation force. It's the feminine. Where this comes out of the tip here, is the centrifugal force. That's where it goes into the masculine expansion, explosion, uh, leading in, in nature to death and erosion. It's gravity, not levity. Equally important, but that's, that's basically what's happening. So when you want to, which I started realizing, I have radionics devices. I've been involved in a radionics for many years. My teacher, grandmother, Falling Leaf, patented a radionics device in 1940. She brought radionics into my world a long time ago and helping me to understand about radionics. I have an SC5 plus 1000, been working with it for years. Well, this is also, this is a most natural form of radionics. And we won't go into that subject right now down the road too deep. So another thing I want you to explain about this, you, you can't see with your naked eye, but there's thousands of sheets going on here. And these sheets are spinning faster and faster and faster as they come down and get drawn down to the middle and down to here. And when we get to this zero point right here, which is where we want to do our best to remain in our days right now on planet Earth. This is exceeding the speed of light. We're going to learn this as we go down the road more. We're going to understand it. This is putting out six to eight times more power than it takes to run. This defies the law of physics. The man, Victor Schauberger, who was another guy way ahead of his time, He's the one who talked about this a lot years ago. And he, um, after about three years after I had patented a few things and I was really going down the road, the book Living Energies came into my life. And that book really rocked my world in a really important way. And the work of Victor Schauberger, who was the true water wizard. And the technologies that he brought through, many of them. He understood nature. Victor Schauberger understood nature. His philosophy was we copy nature, we understand and copy nature's way. And that is so, so correct. 
The problem about us humans is that we don't fully, we don't understand just the basics of nature. And the basics are the centripetal force and the centrifugal force. In nature, it's kind of a teeter-totter. It's a little more centrifugal, a little more centripetal, a little more masculine, a little more feminine. But it overall, it's roughly about 65% feminine centripetal and 35 centrifugal masculine. A healthy forest, there is X amount of trees that are dying and eroding and feeding the feminine. That's the importance of the masculine. The feminine is all about growth and levitation, purification. So the reason, yeah, we don't, we haven't been taught these things in school. So we don't understand these simple concepts that really are going on and they're going on within us too. If we don't learn to be balanced in our masculine and feminine, then we will give, give, give too much, too much of the masculine side of us. And we're not in the feminine side of needing to be receptive. The feminine side of us and the feminine side of nature needs to learn to receive in order to give. The masculine side of us needs to learn to give in order to receive. If we start understanding these things are so critical in the times we're going through. And it's very evident to me, we've lived in this very predominant masculine energy. And it's kind of been based around the patriarchal hierarchy. Everything is kind of pushing and we're pushing things, we're shoving things, we're forcing things. This is where we went wrong with water a long time ago. We got tired of schlepping it from the well and we discovered pumps and we discovered pipes. But we didn't look at water as the mother of all, all life, the source of all life. We didn't look at water as our beloved that it is, our very best friend. We looked at it more as just a substance of hydrogen and oxygen. But I'm here to tell you, it is so, so far beyond that, that you could ever imagine. We're just scratching the surface of understanding the true depth and power that water carries. But it's going to be coming in this age of Aquarius that we're in. So back to the missing the mark, you can say. Where is the first mark we miss? We're shredding it with blades with our pumps. You wouldn't want to do this to your best friend. We're pumping it under high pressure down straight lines and nine degree bends. This is robbing electrons. This is robbing the magnetism. It's robbing the life force energy. And I believe it's what's part of it. What's happening is the hydrogen, the feminine part of water, masculine being the oxygen part of water, a portion of the feminine is leaving. It's literally going through the pipes. It's like, this is, this is bullshit. I don't want this kind of abuse and the key to hydration is hydrogen hydrogen is the key to hydration albert saint georgie nobel prize winner number one fuel of life is hydrogen you add oxygen in the body to that and you produce atp number one thing uh, for us to stay healthy so by the time our water gets pumped from from the pump you have, you have the AC power line, the wire going down the pump. That's putting a 50, 60 hertz frequency. Water's super sensitive, most, sens most sensitive and most programmable substance on the planet. It's a liquid crystal. Do not store your chemicals under your kitchen sink. Very worst place to store them. Matter of fact, I recommend get them out of your house. Water's going to pick up on the informational fields from it. So by the time the water now gets straight jacketed into a pressurized tank, then more straight lines, 90 degree bends that comes out of our tap, that water is not the same water that it was before it hits your pump. Now we look at the situation in cities and what are we doing there? We're dumping tons of chemicals. We're pumping water for miles under straight lines and pumps. And people get a good filter and they say, look, I got clean, pure water. I got the chlorine out. I got the fluoride, yada, yada, yada. And I say, no, only half, only half of the job is done. 
Even my friend Robert Slovak, who invented reverse osmosis, I told him this, I don't know, 10 years ago, and he shook his head and like, nah, I think you're a little bit wacko, Randy. <laughs> now, he's, now he's realizing it, it, it's not so wacko. We must remove the vibrational contaminants out of the water. If we, if we don't, half the job is only done when we remove the physical contaminants. One molecule of water carries up to 440,000 bits of information. And there's literally, there's literally 6 trillion, there's literally 6 trillion molecules in one drop. So I'm showing this here a little bit so you can see the slow motion of what's happening, of this implosion effect, the gases coming in, the gases and creating this zeta life force potential. And when um, I'm going to, you know, I'm just basically, um, I'm going to be jumping around because that's just me. That's how I am. If, if I don't have a PowerPoint, I'm going to jump around a little bit. But we just, again, my, my greatest, if nobody gets anything out of this PowerPoints at all, the only thing that I would ask that you try to get out of this is that mother is the source of all life. Water is the source of all life. When we treat it with love and respect by copying nature's way through magnetism, through sound frequencies, through light spectrums, when we do this, it is an amazing thing of how the water responds back to us. And it's another amazing thing when you start working with photons, I haven't showed this to many people, but here we are programming the water at the zero point. You see how I'm pulsing photons through a crystal at a specific pulse rate. This is an ideal way, one of, one of the ideal ways of actually putting informational fields into water. The zero point is where the water is wide open. The water is like, give me what you have to give me. And every color, I have 24 different colored slides with this. Every color is putting out different informational fields for different purposes. If I'm growing food, if I'm growing food, then basically it's amazing what you can do. Understanding alchemy and water, that you don't have to give your plants and your crops a bunch of fertilizers. You got to understand the power of infusing, enhancing water with informational fields. There's ones for everything on the planet, nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, and no different than you and I. If we need vitamin C, vitamin D, whatever it is, when you understand the art of getting these informational fields into water, it is way more efficient of actually getting these nutrients into the body. As we go down the road, you mark my word, the majority of all of our medicine is going to be in a liquid form. All of our pills, all the hard pills, all the powders, they are going to go out as we wake up and realize it's all about frequency, vibration, and energy, resonance, when we really get this. When we want to go to a whole other level, we can take this and we put the water into a toroidal field. And the toroidal field actually is superior to just a free-flowing centripetal interwinding vortex. Because when we start imploding gases, like dissolved carbon, hydrogen, Brown's gas, um, ozone, oxygen. It is an amazing, amazing thing what happens with water. See, we've been mainly, we were designed to drink water right from a mountain spring. This is how we were designed. We were designed to be drinking water from a mountain brook or spring coming down the mountain. 
or a cold, cold, even a cold river. But of course, we don't have that ability anymore. And this is why I'm bringing this technology. So that I, we, me and many others who are uh, working with me, Audima being one of them, um, to bring this understanding uh, back into existence. Um, here we are in a circle. It's phenomenal what can take place with people healing in this portal. We use these in Atlantis. And when you get a bunch of people who are directing love to the person in the middle, it's phenomenal what takes place. I've literally had people get in here and get underneath this zero point, get under this. You get It's a cone that comes out of here. You get under, literally open your eyes up. I've had people oh, being instantly instantly taken back to Atlantis and literally remembering this technology in Atlantis. I've had, I've seen entities that people could not get out of their bodies that they had in there for years and they knew it. But when you get them in this field, it is, it is quite amazing what happens. So this technology also I've learned just recently, I don't have to install these in the rivers, lakes and streams all over the world. We can bilocate these. I bilocate this 12 times in 12 different locations on the planet. This is between the fifth and ninth dimensional technology. That's what this is. And another thing, I just started doing the bilocating thing um, two years ago. And Adima told me She's the one who told me I, I was actually supposed to get out, make sure every day I went out and I went under this for 45 minutes every day. And I did that until, until I was guided to not do it anymore. And I know why is because this is acting as a like a cell phone to the galactic core. It's acting. It's it's pulling in as Rudolf Steiner stated. I just use a different term. Rudolf Steiner stated, when you create a deep crater vortex in water, you pull in the super sensible energies of the cosmos. And you also pull in the energies of the, of, of the inner earth, from the earth into the water. And they would stir with a big paddle and a 55 gallon drum, and they would do toning work, and they would put different clay and stuff. Then they would take that 55 gallons and they would dilute it with a whole bunch of other water and water the field or water the, the big garden, whatever. This is exactly right. This is one of the things we're doing here. We're pulling in cosmic consciousness. That's one thing I'm very clear about. Another term that Adema shared, me, shared with me is that we are pulling in adamantine particles. And many of you probably have not heard of the term adamantine particles. Well, I hadn't heard of the term yes, either. Yes, we heard uh, the Adam Catman. Pardon me? The Adam Catman. Um, it, that it's we pronounced, are. It's pronounced Adamantine. Adamantine. Yeah. Okay. From the Adam Catman that we are. Yeah. Adamantine. There's a book came out from Glenda Green. Glenda Green was channeling Jesus for a while. She didn't know what was going on until she realized what was happening. She'd never channeled. Well, Jesus appeared to her, start teaching her these things. And one of the things that Jesus was teaching her, the big important thing, his main thing, was about adamantine particles and how he learned how to invoke these adamantine particles, and he would put them into water, and he could, he could affect the water in his body. And this is why when he did a lot of his healing, he would spit in his hands. He would rub it on the people. He would have people go bathe in, in these, these waters that he had charged with the adamantine particles, okay? creating this healing effect. Well, this came into my awareness just two years ago. And it was definitely led by spirit. And... I start thinking adamantine particles and this being named Adema, who has been guiding me over these many years with this technology, 
it all started kind of really put coming together a little more and more. And how we can actually, we, we, what she tells me is that we could have not, um, we could have not did this just a few years ago with the, with the, um, by locating, uh, we, it, it wouldn't have been a, possible. It, it would have worked on some level, but the, the times we're in right now, because of these new energy streaming in the planet, the new frequencies, the new codes of light, uh, many, many other different um, reasons, but it couldn't have been done up until now, basically. And so what I've, what I've realized is a woman named Catherine Parker, who has something that she calls resonance alchemy. And resonance alchemy is basically a light language. Okay. It's a universal light language that she worked channeled in for over 20 years, wrote the book. Finally, she's doing courses and classes and her work came into my field and my guides clearly told me, um, you know, this is a part of yours to learn about. So when Adema told me, you need to start bilocating this, you need to use the light language from Catherine Parker Resonance Alchemy. When you bilocate these, you literally see them bilocated into the area. She then told me, you need to get people together on a Zoom meeting. And you need to basically pick a couple, a couple uh, like one ocean at a time, one major river, and you get a, a satellite image of that ocean. And you get everybody on Zoom. And you basically recite these specific syllables because there's tons of them. There's, there's, I mean, there's ones for just about anything. Uh, and for like de de detoxing water uh, is Durle Naki. Durle Naki. Durle Naki. You recite this nine times with the group of people looking at the body of water, directing their love, directing what these, what, when we're doing this, this is the scalar wave. The scalar wave, it's quite simple. When, when, when a man and a wife are across the planet from one another and the, the man sends love to his wife, the, 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 the energy comes really spiraling out of his heart because a scalar wave is a spiraling waveform. And the Heart Math Institute has basically validated this. Within seconds, the guy's on the, the woman's on the other side of the planet. This spiraling wave comes right into her heart. So when we're working with resonance alchemy, just like radionics or psychotronics, we're working with scalar waves, radionics. Okay. And I'm here to say, and I know beyond a doubt, the mess we humans have all created on this planet, it is not going to be cleaned up in a third dimensional way. It will not be happening. Sorry. We have to think outside of the box, get out of our logical thinking brains that uh, many of us are so programmed with so many programs that we have a hard time doing that, but we can do this. Get out of the right side brain thinking logic, get into the balance, get into your androgynous being that you are, the creator God goddess that you are, the powerful beings that we all are. Step into that power, own that power, and know that you're a powerful being and come together from the heart, from the heart. And we will clean up this mess that we have all been a part of creating. It won't take that much. You know, when I created Project Clean Oceans, I'd worked on it for a long time, creating the website, showing the world how can we efficiently and effectively get these plastics out of the ocean, turning them into building materials right on the ship. How do I know this knowledge? Because I worked on the most advanced commercial fishing operations that ever existed on this planet. Uh, I was a part of, uh, I was a part of, yeah, annihilating, annihilating, literally, uh, a lot of these species on, in, in the ocean. And yes, I'm helping to feed the human race, 
but I was unconsciously doing that's the problem. But anyways, back to the scalar waves and resonance alchemy and cleaning up this condition on the planet that we're dealing with. This can happen. It can happen quite easily. We just have to come together, understand radionics, scale the waves, and come from the power of love, and we'll turn it around. And we can do it actually in not too long of a time. You know, many of us have been waiting for our star brothers and sisters to come down and clean up our mess, but you know, that's not happening. We are the star brothers and sisters. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We have just forgotten this. It's time for us to all wake up and remember this. So what you're looking at here is the best image I can share with you of Adema. She is a rainbow dragon. She's about alchemy. She's about magic. She's about bringing homeostasis to this planet. She's not all about the light. She's definitely not all about the dark. She's all about homeostasis. And so, one other thing I want to run by briefly, because it's time for me to get these messages in the world. And the more I share it, the more it's going to spread. We have this, we have this issue with bottled water that's contaminating our bodies and contaminating the planet. And we need to do something about it. It's time to, we need to do something about it. And the vision I have is you're going to have one of these, a little bit bigger version in every school, every government building, every airport, every, every, every community has one to go to. You're going to be able to go to this place, fill up your jugs, or bring your drinking water jug, wherever you go, just bring your, bring your drinking water jug, and we're going to be drinking full spectrum water that's going to be supporting the shifting of consciousness, because when you really understand water, you realize it's directly related to consciousness. The evolution is our evolution, and the evolution of consciousness is directly related to water. So when we start drinking full spectrum water, water that's been just basically treated with love and respect and honor in nature, you have the, the birds chirping and the frogs and the crickets, you have the sound frequency, you got the light spectrums coming through the trees and through the vegetation that's going into the water. You got the light, you got the sound, you got the magnets, the stones and rivers get aligned to the Earth's electromagnetic field to the North and South Pole. So stones, so water's getting a slight subtle magnetic property, and it's already from the Earth, right? And then we got the gases, which are so, so important that we have way, way overlooked. Gases in water are equally as important as the water. Okay. One reason, big reason is because it supports a healthy microbiome, which supports a healthy um, immune system. But it's the electrical charge that gets in the water when we do this. And we are electromagnetic beings. We need as much electrons in our body to create voltage. And how do we get electrons? We get electrons one way from a live moving water. Water is doing the dance of life. We're not going to get many from stagnant bottled water or water's been pumped through pipes for miles and miles and miles, even though you filter it. you got to get the oxygen, the gases, the magnetism. And then before we drink the water, you know, do a prayer to put a blessing into that water. Ask the water what you want it to do for you. The water where we listen, it will listen when it's out of the state of being in comatose. Water coming out of our taps and city is in a comatose state. It's 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 it, and then bottled water is lethargic. It's it's like stagnant. So don't expect it to do you much if you're not doing much for it. It's going to mirror back to us exactly how we treat it and what we do to it. And my recommendation, my ask is that when you get in the shower, just thank the water. Thank the water for the, the life it gives you, the life that it gives for everyone and everything on this planet, and cleaning your body, giving you nourishment. Before you get in the ocean, you get in the ocean, a lake, whatever it is, a river, just really connect with a spirit 
of the water. Really connect with the soul of the water. Because the water listens. And it, I think the water just wants us to, uh, it, just, it just wants to remember. It wants us to remember that um, it's so important how we treat it and what we do with it. Uh, to support us to, to, to waking up and realizing who we are. When, when I did tests, there's a device called a GDV, stands for Gas Discharge Visualization. Every subject that drank from this fountain, this is called Gaia's Fountain. This is one of the pieces. Every subject that drank from this, people I'd never met in my life, you take GDV, which measures your biophoton energy field, it measures your um, chakra systems, it measures your right and left brain hemisphere, it measures your sympathetic or parasympathetic body, what state it's in. Just drinking four or five ounces of this water within 15 minutes creates a huge, huge change in your biophoton field, enhancing tremendously. Uh, chakras getting stronger and getting more in alignment. And your brain hemisphere, this is the big one that happens when we're drinking full spectrum water. Our brain hemispheres go into balance in a most amazing way. What water has shown to me is that it's not just working with our physical body. It's working with our mental, emotional, spiritual. It's working on our astral body. Our, we have many other bodies. And with this technology, I know in particular, it, it especially in the Artesia version, uh, the Artesia, the version I showed you uh, back here with the pool and spa, this is the version I call Artesia. Uh, you're, you're supporting the astral body in a huge way because a lot of times we got problems and the problems are not just in the physical body, they're in the astral body. This relates to addictions and other things. With the three most densest body, the physical, the mental, and the astral. Somebody say something. Okay. No, so, carry on, Randy. Okay. So, so the, 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 yeah, the other thing that I want to say back to this, I, I'd like everybody to on here, I think you're a group of pretty aware conscious beings, and I want you to do your best to visualize one of these in every, every government building, every school, every airport, every, you got, you got free water, wherever you go. It's not free. Uh, you get a Costco, like a Costco card. That's your, your $25 year member. Your card gets you the water wherever you go. Okay. For people who don't want to, who don't want to believe in it, that's fine. Don't, don't get your Costco, your, your um, full spectrum water um, card. But this is going to solve a big, big issue with this bottle of water problem, because this problem is, is playing havoc on our oceans, as you know. And when I worked on Project Clean Oceans to clean up this problem with the plastics, back to that, we're going to circle back to that for a bit. A girlfriend I was dating, Joanna, after I just put all this work into it, I got it up, I got the nonprofit, the bank, everything, the paperwork done, and, and I'm excited to now share with the world, you know, how we can really efficiently and effectively get these plastics out of the ocean and this garbage and turning into building materials right on the ship. Because that's what I worked on most of my career it was catcher processors. We caught the crab and processed it on the ship. We caught the fish and we processed it right on the ship. We would bring in 150,000 pound sausages of fish up a stern ramp of super trawlers that I was on. Pollock, Lily, tore a net for an hour, one hour, and 150,000 pounds would come up our stern ramp. So I knew heavy equipment, and I knew big rigging, and I knew the only other person on the planet was Boyant Slater, the young man from the Netherlands, and the team that he put together. And his ideas were not practical. I, I honor his dedication and his inspiration, but when I saw his ideas 15 years ago or 10 years ago, I think it was more about eight, 10 years ago, I realized, no, these ideas are not going to work. This thing's going to rip apart the first storm. The first storm that hits it, it's going to rip it apart like a rag doll. I tried to work with them. I tried to go there and they, they said, oh, we got, we got everybody we need. We don't want to take in more people. 
And so I ended up needing to start my own nonprofit. After I did this, so after I put it together, my friend, my, my new girlfriend, Joanna says, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I don't see that's how you're going to do it, Randy. You're not going to catch it in these big traps and process it. I see you're going to figure out, somehow you're going to figure out a better way, a simpler way. And it kind of hit my ego a bit, you could say. I kind of like, that kind of was a jab to my ego because I've been working on it a long time and working hard on it. <laughs> then I like, yeah, whatever, you know, okay. Well, <laughs> last year and the year before, well, two years ago, when I started getting clear guidance about how we can transmute and transform the toxins in the water and how we can even actually get these toxic, the plastic out of the water. And that's because we're going to use alchemy. We're going to learn the power of how to alchemize. And we can alchemize this garbage and do like charcoal and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. This is how it's going to be done in a bigger way. And I know for a lot of people, you know, they would, I don't blame you. You'll say that's just, you're, you're, you know, you're a little woo woo. You're a little too far out there. You know, how many, you're eating too many mushrooms or, you know, what's going on there, Randy. Um, but that is not the case. I'm here to tell you, it is not the case. And we will do this. I have no doubt about this. We I have no it. doubt as well, Randy. <laughs> Randy, mm -hmm. I need to interject here because we all have about, uh, about 10, 12 minutes left for Q&A okay. that I would want to quickly do a summary of the amazing things that you're sharing here with us. It's fantastic. And then I'll pass the microphone over to Fres to do the Q&A. All right. Uh, and um, I'm sure our, our team members here have a lot of questions for you as well. And so we need to do this very quickly before Jim comes in. He's always very prompt. <laughs> right. So you were talking about, I'm just speaking on the most uh, important points here. You're talking about a bioenergetic, uh, uh, what do you call that? That's, screening team that you got my goodness I mean I'm sure we have some questions there okay I, I just want to touch on this point so you can remember to ask uh, Randy and uh, the Bing or Dima that you are channeling through I'm sure we have questions for you there which dimension uh, this Bing is from and uh, what race which planet whatever and uh, you're talking about your project clean ocean um we have questions there too i'm sure and then you're talking about water being the driving life force energy which will we agree absolutely with the scientists who had been speaking at our platform yeah and the gas is creating the life force potential here uh, hydrogen being feminine oxygen masculine water is the source of all life absolutely absolutely and that uh, you were saying that all our medicine will be in liquid form in the future. Oh, <laughs> that is so good because um, enough of the, uh, uh, well, the big farmers uh, pushing those uh, poisonous ones to us. And you were talking about the toroidal flow field that uh, I think our, our team will be very interested in. And so on and so forth. So over to you, Fres. I'm sure you've got loads of questions for Randy. We have to do this within 10 minutes. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Randy. Uh, would you bring up the image, Randy, of the big swirling glass uh, that you showed us for a minute? There's something I want to point out to our uh, viewers, which is it's really indicative on when you scare screen on that. It's the uh, the large floor, it's the water going through it with the uh, down to the vase below. Good, please. Yeah. So what's your what's your question? Recite the question. Well, uh, would, would you, could you put that on the screen for us, please? I want to point something out that's really important with what you've got in your design of the the vortex that's forming in the tube of glass to the and the, the decanter at the bottom of it. Either any I, one of those. I, I, the one that you said with the Fibonacci measurement, right? Right, that is increasing the length. I I closed it. I closed oh, it. Okay. I closed uh, it. I don't, I don't. Not a problem. 
basically, the point that I wanted to bring out for our viewers to take a look at, and they can later when this is posted, they can stop frame it. You have this large sphere at the top. Let's take and look at that large sphere as your skull in the human body. It's a containment at the top. Your ideas are swirling around in it. We then go down to the spinal cord, which gets smaller and smaller and smaller till it gets to the base of your spine. Through that, you have your chakras from top to bottom, and they are spaced at a frequency all the way down. So what we're doing is, with what you're doing, is in many ways replicating the human body and its vortices on the inside. And those of us that are aware of the chakras and stuff, you can see where these interactions come out and project energies from colors and both it's a two-way street through these chakras and that was the part i wanted to bring forward to our our listening group today uh <clears throat> you brought up schauberger schauberger is very very important because schauberger talks about the vortices that show up in the streams and in schauberger's work he says, by the time we get the water to the top of the mountain, it has actually gone through two processes of evaporation and condensation and energizing. It gets energized in the first batch and then energized in the second batch, in the second incarnation of it, and becomes more um, energetic and more usable for the, the body. Temperature comes into it. And we see this, thank you, Crystal, you can see this shape. And this pattern is part of a fractal that we see from the very small to the very large in nature. So uh, you're basically, your design is keeping in tune with the toroidal fields and the, these vortices. And uh, we seem to have gotten away from that as people. Uh, I was looking to see if we had any questions from the group real quick, nobody's typed in anything. Uh, that was just my comments, and I wanted to bring the awareness of our group up to what you're doing and the fractal that's in place. Go ahead if you want to riff a little bit, Randy. Did you get Randy? Was there anything else you wanted to add to the, just the comment that I made? Um, no, no, not really. Okay. Um, yeah, but thank thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, that is important. Um, okay, uh, Pontus, do you have a question? Oh, and yeah, we have a question in uh, the chat. Uh, what about this dead water? And I think I can answer that. That this dead water. What? what okay. So, uh, can you can you recite that question, please? Uh, Mona, she asked, uh, what about the distilled water? So, so I'm a believer. Um, we should be distilling all of our water. Yeah. Okay. Unless, uh, unless you can get water from a mountain spring, a high mountain spring close to where the spring comes out of the ground. And even then, you're going to find contaminants in the water. We have been spraying chemtrails and toxins in our skies and all around the planet for 25, 30 years. So the whole hydrological cycle, in my opinion, has been contaminated. The only real clean water, pure, is the, um, the inner earth water, Mother Earth backup supply, okay, primary water. And that comes out on just a few, few locations on the planet. So... I distill my water, even though I live 8,600 feet up in the mountain. I distill it. I put a high quality ocean mineral back into it. Quinton Essentials, what I use, and I use also Omni Blue, Omni Blue Ocean Minerals. And I have another carbon plant based mineral that I add to, but little, just a little bit of it. Then I put my water in a toroidal field, cold water refrigerator temperature in a toroidal field. And I implode gases, carbon dioxide, Brown's gas, pure hydrogen, pure oxygen, and I implode ozone. 
Then I pulse photons, the specific photon colors at a specific pulse rate for what my body needs. Then I recite specific syllables into that water also as I'm pulsing the photons. Each syllable taking, helping to clear, let's say, parasites or bacteria from the body. So that's a long answer to your question, but that's basically what I believe should be done right now until we turn this around and clean up our situation that we've all been a part of creating. Okay, another question. When you energize water, did it lose its power over time? It will, water has the ability to hold informational fields for years. If you're putting the right minerals in the water and you're doing specific things. Look up the company Infoceuticals. They work. And you can take a bottle of sleep. They have a bottle, one called sleep, people can't sleep. You can have that bottle on your counter for years and still work for you, help you sleep. So, but the, what you will lose when we're talking to daily drinking water, you're gonna lose your gases, okay? You're gonna lose that life force energy. Uh, you're gonna lose water, water's like you or I. We break our ankle and we lay in bed for a week or two and we get up out of bed and we're lethargic. We're like, oh my God, we can't hardly, right? Well, water's no different. It needs to keep moving. So, so recommend, you know, recommend if you do make up like a batch of water, even vortexing, you know, like my hand unit that I travel when I travel around the world, make up your batch and drink it that day. You know, make it your morning ritual. I'm going to combine two questions into one. And it's, uh, uh, it was brought up, my distiller is a pain and it causes me stress. So I just used Alex Burke. It's fairly close to distilled water and a good option for people who are looking for a simple way to get the closest to distilled. But when we look at distilled water, we've removed a lot of the stuff. The only way that we can get the heavy metals and a lot of the toxins is actually to get water boiled or into vapor form and it leaves the, the metals and everything else behind. It, it, it's liberated away from the contaminants. Then it's condensed and brought down, but it doesn't have the energetic flow at that point. It doesn't have the, the, the gases that you talk about. It doesn't have the charge into it. And that's where afterwards you're putting this back into the water. And once again, going back to shower rivers, you've got to get that uh, electrical charge back into it. And in the case of what you're talking about, also the gases. Okay. Um, next question, folks. Uh, let me see that. Crystal, back to you. Thank you very much. Um, are you saying back to me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Catch on. <laughs> okay. So uh, anything, maybe you were talking uh, about the toroidal feel in the water that you are inputting the the prayers and the um, whatever mantras that you say is necessary to charge it up. You're saying the resonance alchemy, um, radionics and scalar waves. And you were saying that the, there's a mantra that you evoke um, nine times, duli naki, duli naki, duli naki, duli naki, duli naki, nine times detoxifying the water. Is it done when you are doing the structured motion of the water with the toroidal feel flow with the atisa uh, yes that's when i do it but you could do it to a bottle of water that you got in the store if you you know you're traveling you, you this mm -hmm. this is this is um it's scalar wave so just you know hold the water and recite the syllables that you feel that you need um because again there's there's so many of them uh there's just you do need to follow up with the syllables always nine times of like the Durle Naki, that's for detoxing water. It all, it needs to be followed up with all tor kri om tur muk. All mm -hmm. tor kri om tur muk. Uh, uh, Randy, is it possible for you to uh, write that down in chat? It would be useful for everyone to say, to say this mantras to the water. If this right. is coming for, from Odima, right? Uh, no, this is not. Oh, Jean is here. Audio. I'm sure Jean likes to know that too. 
Yeah, Adema is the one who basically guided me. She told me, you know, this is this is the things you need to incorporate. But this mm -hmm. work came through a woman named Catherine Parker. Okay. Who, okay. Who was a friend, and I am a student of her. I've taken her. She has three different levels of resonance alchemy uh, training, and she also. I've had sessions. You heal people with these. These these are healing. You can long distance heal. You can do it on yourself. It's an amazing work. The work is very advanced. Yeah. It's it's not for a lot of the people who are not ready for that. But mm -hmm. in my my guidance is it's, it's very advanced and, and wonderful. Randy, if you could just uh, put down in the chat box, uh, Kathy, what's her name, so we can learn from her the 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 the, the mantras as well, the chant. And if you could write down the mantra. We well, well, you, you, you know the the thing of it is, Crystal. This is Catherine Parker's work, and for uh -huh. me, for me, just to be giving out what she. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, if you could put really, her I name down, that would be great. I, I'd have to ask her permission first. I think she would probably be okay with it, right? But oh, perfectly. Yeah. No, the thing is, yeah. you see, if a speaker yeah. were to but, uh, but anybody anybody who, mantra. Well, but she gave me she gave me permission to do this on the Zoom mm -hmm. meetings that I have mm -hmm. to do the global water optimization. I have a group, and it's called the Global Water Optimization Group, and we come together and we recite mm -hmm. these syllables. And as we're doing this. We're not only affecting the water that we're working with, the ocean or the river, mm -hmm. we're affecting the water in our bodies, right? Wonderful. Thank you, Randy. I think Mona, Mona, our regular, has found her <laughs> website. Yeah. Okay. Resonancealchemy.com. Is that her website? Yes. Yeah, she's putting it on chat. So everyone take note. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mona. Yeah. Yes, and she she had the book also. She had the book out. Highly recommend it if you if this if this work resonates with you. Uh, yeah. It is, yeah. It, for me, it's 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 uh, the real deal stuff. It works. Yeah, and you you know Randy's website, right? You just hover your mouse over his name in our website when we promote his talk here. You can get in, get his uh just one click away his websites going to pop yeah up. just <clears throat> so people are clear it is it is vibrant vital water yeah right and you can write to him as well okay folks uh, um, i think we need to bring this to a close now Jean is here it's very prompt fresh is that all right uh uh pontus is there anything you want to add yeah um, i have something to add uh, and i will share screen mm -hmm. Uh, for all of you that are interested in water, this is coming up uh, soon next weekend in Sweden, and it's a conference about uh, Ivona, uh, about uh, Victor Schaberger and water. So it's not on. You will find it in the chat also. The Institute of Ecological Technology. In yeah. Malmo, isn't it? Malmo. Uh, yeah. yeah. So people could fly into Copenhagen and take a train yeah. from to Copenhagen Malmo. to Malmo. Yeah. To Malmo. yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a far journey. It's only about like half an hour to Malmo. Is that correct? Uh, from Copenhagen no, airport. No, one and a half hour to Hull. Oh, sorry. Okay. Right. Yes. All right then. <laughs> um, so there being no other business now, this first session of our 115th meeting is now adjourned to the second session where Jean Decode speaks, our second speaker. And we would like to thank Randy Hatton for speaking at this first session. And it is truly, really spot on for the technologies as well when you're talking about water, like uh, Shofi in water yourself. Thank you, Randy. We thank you very much for returning to speak here. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Crystal. Thank you again, and everybody listening. Um, yeah, thank you. Our pleasure. Right, we can stop recording now, press. Yeah, mine's <laughs>